You have reached the Geek Elite. Good luck. Nostalgia is one of the strongest forces in the human psyche and is responsible for the continued existence of some of our favorite fandoms. From the minds behind the Dole Up and Dreams podcast and Isolation Cast Voices from Quarantine, Saturday Morning Confidential takes you on a deep dive into the properties that helped influence the artists and creators of today. So whether you are a Goonie, a Gym Girl, a Digi Destined, or you just want to return to Oz... New episodes release on Fridays bi-weekly starting January 1st of 2021. And join us on the Wednesdays after the main show for the Serial Killer Radio Hour, where we sit down with the people responsible for the toys, shows, and fandoms that you love. Now you can find Saturday Morning Confidential at certainpov.com backslash smcpod or on your favorite podcast platforms. So don't forget to tune in for another deep dive into the files of Saturday Morning Confidential. Estamos grabando en un día especial. El día es septiembre 16, 2021, y hoy se festeja 201 décimos años de la independencia mexicana y que se escuche desde donde estés escuchando y que viva México. Welcome, listeners. Welcome, JV Pickers. Let's wait here. Back with working together to bring you a playlist worth getting lost to by our collective brain trust. This week's theme is emo. So grab your quarters, pick your dibs. Kickly Media presents Jukebox Vertigo. Go, go, go. <laughs> so, it was a big table. We're still at this big table. But sadly, it wasn't going to be a full table because we are, in the end, our loner emos here at the <laughs> show anyway. So, in the end, it was appropriate. But everybody who got to miss out on the show is always welcome back on any other one. Just hit me up. On at Jukebox Vertigo on Twitter. Hashtag always be plugging. So, introducing everybody. Welcome. Steven. It's me. It is you. Also from Geekly Media. Also from uh, Love of Pages. Mm-hmm. Good to have you, buddy. Thank you. It's good to be back. And yeah. th- this is this is one that I I basically like pointed at. Like it was going to be the home run. <laughs> yes. like, I, I pointed for the rafters like I'll be on that one. I have said this before. I've. I guess not called out, but I've shouted out um, you, Stephen, on the show. That <laughs> I know you from high school. I know you pretty well. Not pretty well from high school, but because I would just admire, admire you from afar. <laughs> you were just like the coolest. You were like... Far you, from this. Your nickname was the happiest emo. Back when being emo was borderline a stigma. <laughs> you rocked that shit with the tightest pants and the straightest of comb over hair. It was wonderful. And you always did it with a smile on your face, buddy. It was awesome. So it's I was... I could- so, I couldn't through. see the back of my hair where it wasn't straight. That's why I was still smiling. But that's what made it cool. Uh, <laughs> so that's, I, was, I was so excited for you to join this episode. So, and of course, as always, we're going to have ourselves Keith. Yo, um, I know you're very excited to have me on the emo episode. <laughs> oh, dude, I, mean, I love it. it. It's like me jo- going over to the stepping into uh, the country episode. It's kind of like, all right, I don't know. Not really my thing, but shoot my shots. Don't take my picks. Yeah, when was the country good. episode? Uh, before the reboot, it'll uh, come back around. I okay. promise. <laughs> I might want to be on that one too. Ooh. Oh, oh, please! I'm, you know, I'm going to bring in. Country, please. I'm going to bring in Billy Gilman because <laughs> I was about one voice when I was a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, sweet. So, uh, moving forward with uh, our small table. Next up is let's talk about our what we've been listening to. Some recommendations. It's been a while. And I had some repeatsies. I uh, had some fun stuff that I listened to. There was let's stop. Let's let's. let's I'm gonna start with the stuff that wasn't as fun. Um, Iron Maiden has sen, Senjutsu, and it was musically it was an Iron Maiden album. But man, you can just like Bruce Dickinson is just he's just an old man. <laughs> like, <laughs> you were talking about like I uh, haven't done high high no, high 
uh, pitch voices in a while, and it's like, bro, like, I, I, I don't think he has either. It's been it's been a minute. But musically, Sh- Senjutsu was super dope to listen to. Like just like for all, for all that old school metal. Lady Gaga with Dawn of Chromatica. That whole mm-hmm. time I was listening to it, I only wanted to go back to Chromatica and listen to the original songs. Uh, so yeah, go back and listen to last year's Chromatica because we were robbed from a great pride last last year with that album. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, not really necessarily bad, but um, it's just because I basically listened to most of it already, but now it's all collected. But uh, anime music Lisa with uh, Hadashi No Step, pretty much like her four song EP with yeah Hadashi No Step and a few of the like, pretty much like all the singles all, all collected into one. Um, let's just go in order before I get lost. There was a uh, low or a uh, friend of the show, uh, Jake Jacob, uh, that we know. I saw him tweet out a uh, uh, shout out with the uh, Lowe's album Hey What, and it was really cool. It was interesting. I would call. I mean, Jimmy, I have never really listened to Low, but they have a, a vast, a, so many, so many albums. With this one, it was interesting where it was like alternative folk music, but it was like in like that's just like the most generic way I can put it. I'm probably just doing a disservice, but it, it was it was a cool listen to. The other one that was a very interesting listen to this thing that was like. I was, saying, I was mentioning it to Sochi where it was like it tested me, but not in a bad way. It was just like it was an experience. And this was a uh, uh, lingua ignatas sinner get sinner get ready. And this shit was heavy. This shit was heavy on your ears. Where it was just like, I mean, a lot of spoken word just like being thrown at you, or just like, Whew, we're going somewhere with this. So that was interesting. If you just want to like just take a moment on that one, it's, it's a cool project. Now yeah, for the old stuff. Before we catch up on the actual last week stuff, the Cranberries had a very lovely um, culmination put together with Remembering Dolores. And it is probably like my new favorite greatest hits of, of, the, of the Cranberries. Uh, you're not going to get your automatic go tos. You're not like Zombies, Linger, Dreams automatically aren't on there. This was a greatest hits uh, cultivated by uh, family members, uh, remaining band members, just like pretty much like all their favorite songs that would pretty much like them how they would remember Dolores or like their personal favorite tracks from her. And you listen to all these and it's like, yeah, obviously like they're all cranberry songs, but they really do highlight all of like Dolores is just like lyricism, her singing. And it's like, it's, it's so well put, put together. So I definitely re- uh, recommend rem- remembering Dolores. Then probably like a contender for one of my favorite R&B um, hip hop albums of the year, Little Sims with sometimes I might be introvert. I was a real big, real big fan of the "I Love You, I Hate You" single earlier this year. I kind of had it; we kind of had it on repeat, and now the whole album was out. This shit was really, really fun, and it was kind of like a, an acronym. It said backronym, but it's um, it's uh, her nickname of her name is uh, Simi, which is sometimes I might be introvert. That's why she kind of named it that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but damn, it was like a really good listen to, and it's, um. Black UK rapper, and she's just amazing. Like we like, and I, and I love listening to like that accent and on rapping. We love like the the like Riz Ahmed rapping, just like that intricate mm-hmm. act, exotic accent, and then it's like throw, throwing bars. Oof, I just lo- I love that mix. Moving along, we had yet another word question mark side C E P from atmosphere it's pretty much like the whole the whole album is being released in these ep sections and then the album would just be all of the eps together <laughs> so, like gorillas and, did like yeah. when gorillas was releasing the ep every three weeks for a while there <laughs> pretty much yeah it's pretty much what's gonna happen so i guess like the album should be coming out relatively soon since i think all the songs are basically out no there's gonna be a side d so it can be on like the double vinyls so i can expect that and then i can actually fully review the album because i think side c is like so far like my favorite bunch like a bunch of songs out of the out of the three so far um okay i kind of wish that crozen was here for this episode uh, <laughs> I, I knew his um I, I i already expected what his intro was gonna be with uh with baby keem's the melodic blue do you guys listen to this one absolutely not <laughs> oh god you don't you listen to that clip the that he sent us what was the line so she fuck she's not listening she's ignoring me <laughs> Oh, the, the top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning. Oh my god, it goes on for like two measures. He says it like eight times, like it goes on too too long. Where it's just like, 
you didn't you didn't think of what to say, did you? Right there, and then it passes over to Kendrick's part, so you just forget. But it, you don't you don't forget because it's like it's like that pancake. It's like pancakes all over again. It's, it's it was literally that. It sounds like Donda. No, no, you, you don't <laughs> don't. Kendrick was attached to that, so just don't. All right, just don't. <laughs> He just All kept right, saying we'll, the same thing over and over, right? <laughs> we're moving on. Just don't. <laughs> Radiohead had a single. Um, if you say the word uh, since uh, after the release for the video game uh, tease. Yeah. Kid, a, Kid Amnesiac or something Kid like that? Kid Amnesia, yeah. Yeah. It, it's still yeah, yeah. kind of tied to Kid A. I, th- I thought it was kind of like re-releasing a single from Kid A, but it's, it's, kinda, it's basically a new song. Are you, are you guys excited for the video game? It was Absolutely weird as fuck, but I'm so into it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd like to see more about what it is mm-hmm. first before I get too hyped. You know, it it feels like a VR experience, but I don't think it's that. I yeah. Hope not. <laughs> yeah, because like it would be limiting the scope of people who could experience it. Yeah. Um, there was I was going to Metallica, the Metallica blacklist earlier. <laughs> there was um people covering. I was like, nothing else matters. Sad but true. I think a couple of Enter Sandman's. There's some really bad ones. Some pretty interesting ones. Some actually kind of like Doug. Uh, mo- mostly because I'm a sucker for Sad But True. It's my favorite Metallica song. Mm-hmm. But I didn't go over li- to listen to any of these. I'll collect. I wasn't going to listen to like, the whole thing. I was going to listen to like the ones I remembered or ones that kind of interested me if I missed out. But uh, I didn't. I didn't want to. <laughs> so <laughs> after that, new new songs that just kind of came out just yesterday was oh, an album I'm so excited for in just couple of weeks two weeks three weeks one two two weeks away <laughs> dying wish a lo- local um metal band dying wish and their fragments of a bitter memory are is, oh god that first thing was awesome the second thing was really good and now there was a third one severing the severing the senses fuck it's really good and she can just do clean vocals like i'm mean, obviously I mean, anybody can do clean vocals it's just regular singing but when when you just get the break from her screams those guttural deep ones and then it's like oh damn she can deliver, deliver a good hook and it's just like it doesn't really ruin like the metal aspect of it it's just like when you were you would expect like the duo and you like enter like the lady doing like the hook no it's fucking all her and it's just, like it's so good and i can't wait to see them here um so yeah and in two weeks the, the whole album, the whole album will, will be out and then today, Porque es el Día de la Independencia, Snow the Product released a video and a song, uh, Que le gusta el flow, and whew, it is a spicy video. But the song, of course, <laughs> the song, of course, it is super fucking dope. Of course, she delivers. And with somebody who, I don't, she hasn't really collaborated before with uh, John Z, and he enters in fast and hard, and I was actually, and I was automatically a fan of his. Uh, even I just like uh, him in the song, and it's so definitely collaborate more and i'm so happy that she's like going and popping off more in mexico now so rounding off that pretty much all of my recommendations to close it off <laughs> since it's part of the topic today the used hey. the, the used had a hard work uh the deluxe release but it's basically like it hard work was last year's album and now they released a deluxe version but it was kind of like why because like you hear deluxe right you get like two three maybe four songs there's a whole like was it i think not 11 songs where it's basically they could have just said it because like a double album they just added a whole other album onto this deluxe one of yeah last year's album so and it's um, entire it's a new songs not like uh demo versions of songs no you always get like those like in parentheses demos like you're like you can see the same tracks it's just a bunch of new songs huh so if you like that one because it was a it was a pretty all right album uh for our heart work but now there's just it's a 27 album deluxe collection so that was all of my bits steven what have you mm-hmm. been listening to what have you been jamming to all right so the thing that i've been playing the most the most has been well i've I played several things one of the things i can't mention until later in this episode but the thing that i've i have replayed over and over again is god only knows a beach boys cover by uh, what is it? I forget the the main group. It's Scary Pockets, which is um like it, it, they have a couple members of Pomplamoose, and then this one just says featuring Pomplamoose. It really? is <laughs> so good. It's so fucking good. They say it says it says it's a Beach Boys God Only Knows funk cover. It's not super funky, but it's it's still got funk in it, and just oh man, it's lovely. 
Um, other than that, um, there are a couple things that I've listened to the most recently. Um, the next one would have been, there's a new song from one of my favorite post hardcore bands from my teen days. Uh, they, they came back around, they had a 10 year reunion tour and now they've put out two new songs. Neither of them are my favorite thing in the world, but it's just that good to have new music from them. Uh, and so the second one is the newest single talk about it by the band lower definition. The third one, the third thing that I've been listening to most is that Daniela Andrade, she put out a bunch of live videos and she's oh, just nice. too good. Like I, I, I hadn't seen I her post her. these. She's been posting them like over a few weeks, but like when they're now finally all out together, I went back and I was watching them and playing them through again because for the most part, I believe they're all songs that she's released before. So That's those are very good. I am a huge fan of hers. Uh, from like um a buddy of mine was playing it from his room and it was just loud enough for me to catch it from the living room and it's like as soon as it was over it's like dude what the fuck was that just send it to me <laughs> and it was like when she was kind of first start starting out so it was like 2015 16 it was when she did her her <laughs> telegraph app and sober cover of childish gambino like mm-hmm. her meddling two childish songs together and it's like wow that's fucking dope as hell um and after that, i was like yeah she's dope she, i like yeah her. i remember um like I've, I've like same like i i've ended up watching most of her stuff back when because it was covers you know i know yeah. these songs and this person has a fantastic falsetto i want to hear them uh and then I, obviously she's gotten much bigger she's like it seems like she's found who she is and she's living that through her music and then she did that song that was in umbrella academy that was uh, a cover and i was just like yeah because I'm a person who watches things with all the subtitles on. Yeah. <laughs> so it said like this, this song by Danielle Andrade. And I was like, ah, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I was watching just to follow up on your subtitle statement. I forgot to mention this to you guys. I think it's funny. I was watching My Hero Academia because uh, I've never actually watched the show. And what? I know. I've, re- I've read every manga volume. Don't <laughs> But uh, I was like, eh. so I watched it and I watched the dub, which apparently makes me a war criminal, according to Liz. Um, but it's not as good, but still good. She's like, wait, you're watching the dub. I'm like, yeah. She's like, but you have subtitles on. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything should have subtitles. Everything yeah. forever. <laughs> yeah. I appeal to both at the same time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, listen, I, we, I want to listen want... to it, but if I miss something, I want to be able to look down and see what they said. Right. Yeah. With, we with, read with comic Japanese, books. Uh, yeah. With Japanese, I have to actually sit and read, and I'm not looking at what's going on. Uh, you know? I mean, like, I, I'll give you that. It really, like, we're talking, we're talking a little manga break, uh, anime break, <laughs> but it really sucks when it's subs and it's like everybody's talking at the same time and they literally put both dialogues at, on top of each other and it's mm-hmm. like Phew, they're saying this and you're reading two dialogues to step. It's, it's crazy yeah. Yeah, so, yeah it can be a mess sometimes but yeah that's what I've been listening to for the most part alright dope dope and Keith what have you been listening to since the last show well the thing I listened to right before our last show was the first thing I listened to after our last show which was the new songs from ABBA mm. and and <sighs> Uh, I still lo- really like them. I know a lot of people are dumping on them, but they're elderly. They're not going <laughs> to give. They're not going to give you dancing queen guys. Like, just they, get over it. I like, will say they do sound like they're like this. This is the last time. Yeah. <laughs> like this is the song that plays when it's like okay, everyone, like last call, like go home, find your cars. Yeah, like like if they make Abba the movie, this is the one that plays during the credits. Like yeah. yeah. So um. I like them. They're fine. Uh, I'm just really excited they're going to tour. <laughs> I really badly want to see Ava live. Um, but yeah, it's it's good stuff. I, I enjoy them. I think part of me is a really big fan of stuff like The Carpenters. And so mm. this come off a lot like The Carpenters. And I'm like, cool, I love The Carpenters. I've been threatening to put The Carpenters on this playlist for a while now. <laughs> um, so um, uh, I also listen to Drake. Certified Lover Boy. And my review for that is um, Donda is more interesting. <laughs> Drake is better. They're both way too long. Way too long. I cannot do that. Like, that's not happening. I didn't get through either of them all the way. Didn't care enough. So, yeah. Uh, and then uh, the big news for me this week is we got some new Fickle Friends music. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got a new single from Fickle Friends, uh, which was really, really good. 
Uh, it's called uh, Are We Gonna Be All... No, no, sorry. The album's called Are We Gonna Be All Right? And the song is called Love You to Death. And um, I've already pre-ordered the album, which I told Josue I had to import from England. And the shipping costs are more than the album. <laughs> uh, but it's a really cool blue transparent album. And I'm fine with that. So um, can't wait. And they're touring in uh, in Europe right now. So hopefully that means once everything gets resolved with COVID, they can make a tour to the U.S. and I can see them live because I love, love, love me some Fickle Friends. That'll be cool in 2027. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> when I'm like 50 and just <laughs> 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 an old man watching Fickle Friends. Um, I also listened to the Shang-Chi, or Shang-Chi soundtrack. That's a good soundtrack. Oh, it's so good. It's a good awesome. soundtrack. Um, my only criticism with it is, is it starts off way too hot because the best song is the first song, Always Rising. Mm. It's really cool because it starts off really mellow and then it gets into this quick, fast spitting of rap lyrics and it's fucking awesome. And then everything else after that's really cool and fun, but it never hits that high again. And I think if that was like shifted a little further down the album, I think that would have been made a little better, but I still love the album. Absolutely <clears> great. <throat> Almost as good as the movie. Uh, so <laughs> that's two reviews for one. Um, I also listen to a lot of Vince Staples. Ooh, nice. I, I just keep coming back to this album, man. I think it's, it's my, it's my hip hop album of the year so far. Oh, damn. Nice. Like, I just love it. So, and I, I even went back to like FM, his old album. Like I've been <laughs> kind of going back to his old stuff because of it. So, um, and then I listen to Blackpink and one of the girls from Blackpink, the third of the four girls from Blackpink, Lisa has released her first solo uh, project Ooh. just called La Lisa. And it's got two songs on it, La Lisa and Money. Now, she's the one that's predominant, predominantly known in Blackpink as the rapper. They're always the ones that do a solo album first. You know, two others have already done it. That's the thing. Like, what? The, she's the third of the four. <laughs> yeah. like That's they're, crazy. They're really capitalizing on it because they're the biggest, besides, besides BTS, they're the biggest Korean band in the world. Like, they're insane. And so... They're really trying to capitalize on while they're still hot, I guess. So, you ever listen to Brown Eyed Girls? No, it's a good k- good K-pop group. Also, yeah. Girls Gen- Girls Generation. Mm, Don't get me stop it, stop it, stop getting me more. So K-pop. good. <laughs> I fought this. <laughs> I, I like Blackpink because they're different. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also listen to a band I can't talk about because they're kind of coming up later. We'll talk Ooh. about that in a bit. Um, kind of coming up later. Uh, but then uh, I also listened to some Dua Lipa, obviously. It's, I kind of came around to Dua Lipa again because it was time. And it's she's good music for me to listen to while I'm reading, you know? Like, I'm reading my comics for the week, and she's good music to put on because I don't have to think about it too much. And the last thing I listened to wasn't music, but uh, this is as good a place as any for me and Josue to say that rest in peace, Norm MacDonald. Oh, mm. uh, Yeah. I went back and listened to some of his stand-up. Uh, I listened to me doing stand-up, which is the name of the album, which opens with a speech about him, about how good it is to be alive and not dead, which is just... Yeah. <laughs> so, um, But he's... I know he wasn't a perfect guy. Like, he, he made some really offhanded jokes that were kind of, like, offensive to people, I understand. But in my opinion, nobody has ever constructed and delivered jokes as well as Norm MacDonald. I don't no, know, for I sure. Think, I think he's the best when it comes to that. Um, I think and, my show's pretty safe to say, like, he's no piece of shit like Adam Carolla, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like double, double down that way. Yeah. I mean, he made some off color jokes, but I mean, that's most comedians. He didn't, he didn't hurt anybody. He didn't, you know, so um, I saw some people like the day he died trying to like start this revolution against saying rest in peace for norm mcdonald like, well, i know he i know he, he had he'd kind of come down on like what i think we would all agree is like the the wrong side of a couple issues in the last few years yeah yeah that, i think that's the thing where a lot of that stuff came from yeah yeah and also if you ever watch the norm mcdonald show the the web show he does it gets pretty extreme you mm-hmm. know and just like he's a comedian you know and it's it's unfortunate and it's not to everybody's taste and his later stuff I wasn't the biggest fan of, but you can't argue with the fact of how he can construct construct comedy. Yeah. yeah. I think I think like he was a quintessential stand up. You know what yeah. I mean? Like like so it's a shame. Just, if we find out like six years from now, there's like some weird situation where we like we're in like some like Percy Jackson kind of thing where like we're <laughs> we're we're meeting all the gods and stuff and we meet whoever's responsible for taking people. 
at the end of their lives and they were aiming for Joe Rogan and missed. I swear <laughs> to God. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, I, I've, uh, I've always been fond of, uh, like, I just like my first introduction of, of Norm Macdonald was uh, Billy Madison. Like I was just like, I was a kid like oh, in the nineties. Wow. I was, I was a kid in the nineties. So like that first opening bit, we're just like, what's today? October. Like dude, and that shit killed me. Really, like at, at, at that point, I was like, "Oh, that dude's fucking funny." And like every time I would see him everywhere, I was like, "Oh shit, yes!" Like I've, I've always, I was, I always got excited seeing him. So it was, it's been a shitty year losing kind of, kind of some comedians. Like a couple months ago, I was a big yeah. Sean Locke fan, and seeing him go almost for like similar base, similar conditions, and it's like, fucking, hey, these comedians are just <sighs> take care of yourselves. Personally, I just learned not to fall, not not to love comedians anymore because oh, I yeah. still haven't gotten over even just Mitch Hedberg. And that was yeah. what? Oh my God. Was it four? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was like <laughs> nine girlfriends ago. ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no. Yeah. And the, and also comedians tend to be more problematic than others. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And also, uh, last thing about Norman Donald, the best roast performance ever when he uh-huh. roasted Bob Saget, and he right. did the opposite. He did the anti-roast. That shit was so funny. Like I love that. So. He's original. It's, it's unfortunate, you know. So, but yeah, that's it for me. Uh, no other music that I can think of. I listen to. Cool, cool. Now let's get on to adding this fresh new page to the jukebox. Emo music. Ah, uh, I love emo music. We were talking about it can be such a stigma. It's uh, because like, but that's only for like the this is like the middle. It's, it was like the midlife crisis of emo. It like for now. Literally, we're on the fifth, like, okay, we're just going to get, like, kind of technical. Right now, we're in the fifth wave. People call it the DIY phase of emo. So, two phases ago, or two waves ago, was, like, the midlife crisis of emo. And that was the pop the pop punk era. Like, your your eyeliner green days and your MCRs and your, pop, and your popular ones. But there's just so much else around it that is just so beautiful. <laughs> emo can be traced back all the way. But even, like, I guess, like, now, in retrospect, it's, like, Joy Division can be considered it. And like, not necessarily the band, and not, and I'm not saying like the 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 tragedy, but you would watch interviews, and Kurt Cobain, for all of his cynicism, was pretty emo just to, to be around. Dare you even? You would have him. <laughs> you would have him around, and, be, and you would say, "All right, who brought the emo to the room?" You would is somebody would say that about Kurt Cobain. That may, and then and then so let's talk about some of his lyrics. And then you move into now the pop, the popular phase, um, the popular uh, the popular phase, which is like what I was talking about the the pop punk phase, and uh, that's kind of like where I was kind of like my pubescent adolescence was like that era middle part. So it's at first it was kind of like it's all it's all about metal. So I would see it up like nah, that shit wasn't music, but after a while I was like, you know what? There's some good shit in the middle there. And then, then, then later on, discovering what music kind of was, it's kind of like, all right, cool. That's considered emo. That's considered emo. I guess in the end, I'm just a sucker for fucking emo, and nobody can mm-hmm. tell me different. I'm, I'm actually kind of yeah. curious. We have, we have a, a lighter table this time. We're not a round table. We are a triangle table for this episode. So, what was, what would you guys think is like the first emo experience you ever had for music? Because I think I know where this really was. Well, for me. Here's my issue, right? And yes. this will lead into answering your question, right? So I don't think emo is a genre of music. That's the problem. I think emo is a, an attitude. And if we're talking about an attitude, then yes, Kurt Cobain was an emo person, you know, literally emotional person. <laughs> um, so that's why I'm like, but to me, emo, like, in this definition is a style of music. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. If we're talking emotional. We can go back to Otis Redding is emo. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like, so like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's kind of like, uh, it's complicated. So my definition of emo is very complicated. My, um, my first experience with what I realize is emo is actually a band that I did not realize was emo first. And they're actually coming up later. So I'm not going to talk about it right now. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know, for you, Josue? I don't know. I don't. I don't step on anybody else's bubbles because I can think of a few where I started to <laughs> contemplate lyrics based on like, okay, this genre is isn't what I would consider, or at that point, I didn't really know what emo would be or what what I knew what emo would turn out to be. And that's the thing. Like to me, like you don't see it as as a genre, and I see it, and I've, well, I've always seen it as like, well, music is always evolving. So that's why I'm saying like, there's been waves of emo because it's always been. 
how people have been like transitioning uh, through throughout the times, which is why like pro- arguably the best times were was after the the third wave, the revival of God, of emo, some of the greatest indie bands. See, and that's, that's where it went into from like pop pop punk emo into the midwestern indie bands that yeah. were that had this foundation of emo. So, where, so let me, so let me yeah. ask you this though: What's your definition of emo? This, this is one that I like. If if we don't go into it now, it was one hundred percent gonna be a thing that I had to like deconstruct at least a little bit when yeah. I started delivering my my picks. To the simplest point, I guess like lyrics is gonna be like the easiest call out as far as like music wise, like presentation wise. At this point, there's just so much of it. It's just like which wave you're kind of like ad- adapting to because you have your screamos, but then you have your uh, uh, your newfound glories, and it's just like. They're just vastly different. Mm-hmm. I, I, for me, emo is not necessarily just any one particular sound. Even though I think it does start with one kind of sound, mm-hmm. it's it's whichever one is identified as emo to you in that time. Which I think is, for me personally, uh, like an offshoot of indie, where we first started saying what indie was, and then there's a certain kind of tonality that split off from that. Um, with like a little bit crunchier guitars and a specific mm-hmm. kind of turn to it. And then from there, everything else was just, it relates back to this other thing that relates back to that first entry into quote unquote emo for me. Everything from there was just, if it could trace its lineage to how I found it or how, or what I thought of it going back to that first one, that's emo. I, I think like um, to me, emo, because I don't go back as, far as some in my head with emo i think uh one of the indicators of emo is a level of production um that's fair i I don't think like going further back again if we're going with like based on you know emotional lyrics and even simple lyrics maybe with guitars that's the beatles you know i wouldn't label the beatles as emo you know what i mean so that's what i'm saying like i think there's a certain level of production and i think my big thing with it is i think emo spawned out of grunge there's the people went harder and the people went softer. And I think emo was the softer edge of grunge. And so that's kind of how I define it mm-hmm. is the more singer songwriter style of grunge. And then you got the alternative rock that went the other way. I think that's- unpolished self-produced off of like offshoot of Indian grunge is where that started for me. Oh, for sure. I was going to yeah. say that's a perfect segue into like, I guess like my example of that I guess like, I wouldn't use it this time because it was there were an entry on the, on the last time, but Sunday Day real estate from the nineties, mm perfect a great emo band but then again like it's like i guess like this is where i kind of like is like my, my other side of it is like i guess like the product i don't see like the production side because you have that band and like that indie side but then you have your um again the middle the middle ground the midlife crisis the uh panic at the, dis- at the discos mm-hmm. the so, self-produced different- yeah. Less. Yeah, well, I'm not so much like you know money put into production but there's mm-hmm. a level of production it's less yeah, yeah. I don't want to use the word raw, but it's less raw than, say, like the heavier version that came out of Grunge, is what I would say. It's also more melodic. And again, it's a really intangible thing to kind of define because some things, and some bands are sometimes emo. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and that's the thing. So it gets really kind of complicated in that. Um, but I just think, um, like, there is like a certain style of production starting post emo and. I would say I wouldn't go to emo, I wouldn't go for emo beyond going back further than say ninety five. That would be about I'd say ninety five ninety six is the birth of emo for me. Mm-hmm. Um, the early early stuff, and then of course we know when the heyday was because um, we all listened to music at that time. <laughs> and um, but yeah, I just think it's really interesting that like because I know Josue, you and me have talked about it, and you've talked about emo hip hop and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that, I mean that branches off a whole nother thing, and so. I just think emo is really nebulous and it's less like I wouldn't put emo in the same category as say hard rock metal uh, country hip hop so much as I would put it in the same vein as ballad love song. You know, it's a style. It's a, it's a, sub, it's a subgenre. Like there's so many metal ones. You want to put your glam metals with your, like, yeah. your neck, your necrophagious in the same from a uh, level yeah what i'm saying it's not it's not so much the style of the music is what i'm saying it's the style of the song it's mm-hmm. the song writing how it was written because to me emo is about the lyrics in the end like emo is about the lyrics to me 
Um, so I think that's kind of like, yeah, it, it, I wouldn't compare it to other musical genres. I compared it to other music song styles, love songs, ballads, mm-hmm. you know, um, bitch, I'm back songs, you know, what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. so yeah. So I think, I think that's kind of interesting because it's, you know, everybody approaches emo a little differently, which I think is really interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's always a blast where when it was safe to emo nights at, at bars, clubs were just <laughs> the dopest. <laughs> I hope they come back. I hope they it, come back. Because it, it, it's going to be the kind of thing that you can do easily and not have to have like a whole tour behind a thing. Someone can be a DJ. Well, it would like, like here there's like for sure there was at least two different places that were like at least like once a month. It was like a thing to go to it was like mm-hmm. the, at the Hive. Or it was called the Hive Mind at the Star Theater and at the Holocene. There was always a, a at least one night a month. There's like, let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know who's who's uh, starting off with the, the actual injuries here. I who's putting the first sticker you. on the jukebox? Well, yeah, I will tell you who is putting the first entry to the jukebox. The first entry will be none other than a recent into interviewer we interviewer we yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Of a favorite of ours, we literally read a handful of her comics. Stephanie Phillips, please tell us what is your entry to the jukebox? Uh, all that I've got by the used. Oh, nice, <laughs> excellent, excellent. Very emo. <laughs> and that's funny because we 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 always make sure not to duplicate bands so i have to tell the rest of the group don't use the used which would be fun <laughs> so, <laughs> that's actually might have been one of mine now that i think about it so uh, awesome. yes i fucking loved the used and all i've got is a good song i can't believe i'm just thinking about this not them but such and i went to go see not the used well they just happened to be there but we went to go see bayside and I can't, believe I, didn't, I can't believe I didn't think about it. We've seen Bayside twice. And I can't believe I didn't consider any of their songs. I fucking love Bayside. No, Bayside's amazing. And Intero Bang is the most confusing uh, album to try to suggest to anybody. Because I don't know what the fuck Intero Bang means. But that's a good album. I've, oh. actually, I've actually seen Bayside live, too. They're, They're just so good. really good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God. Little rant. Like, I know we're starting the jukebox already, but and we did our intros. But... The most, one of the most emo. I, oh God, I guess my most emo. Going back to your question, uh, Stephen, not the first time I discovered, like really, or, or when I first discovered emo. But my most emo moment was literally being arm in arm, lined up after everybody moshing with each other, with a bunch of other dudes, just chanting out to the fucking skies to "Don't call me Peanut." Nice. It was the most emo moment of my life, and just seeing everybody <laughs> knowing the words, like the like the manliest of dudes, and just like, oh my god, we've all been heartbroken, we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I think that I think that's the true joy of Bayside. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like anyone can be a Bayside fan. Yo, oh, absolutely. I, I oh god, I don't I, I, uh, Bayside. <laughs> but, uh, don't put on bad luck. The guitars for that one just drive me, dude. Okay, okay. I guess honorable mention from my from me would have been Bayside. Hey, one of us might say Bayside. My one of you might say Bayside. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't gonna go for Bayside, but you know what? That's the, it's it's because we could narrow it down to one song. When you walk up to the jukebox, you just push like two B, and the whole album plays. <laughs> it's the cheapest play. It costs you one quarter to play it. When normally it would be a quarter per song. Yeah. It's great. Um. So it, it, it just came to me because uh, um, the second time we saw them. Uh, the used open up for them. Mm. So oh. now for my first entry, I really love it when I can do this, when I can actually transition a song from the last episode into this one. Last episode was solo projects. And this one started as a solo project because back in my space days, people, that's how people started kind of music sometimes. Um, and this one was by, do you guys know who Aaron Jalipsy is? Gal- uh, Aaron Gillespie? Gillespie? Like Gillespie, yes. Yeah, from Under Oath, yeah. Yes. Are you, you going to do, are you going to, um, what is, uh, no, I'm not, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, man, back in 2007, I was enamored with this fucking album because there was this little single out called Say This Sooner by The Almost. This project was really dope. I was actually more a fan of this than I was from Under Oath, and everybody loved Under Oath in 2007. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just a fact. Everybody, for some reason, I mean, I, I, I just, I'm just hating on it, but... They're, they're all right. 
I was, I was like, that's why I was, I was more stoked when Aaron would come on on the on the lyrics, but when he'd be back there drumming away. I'm but then you. he had, then he had uh, his own project when he'd be more uh, uh, up in front with the almost. And yeah, say the sooner is just such a good song. It's such a good chanty song. It was, it was just honestly, it just reminds me of like those high school vibes back in Cibola. So I like that's what I'm doing right now, transitioning from last episode to this one with the almost with say this sooner. And Stephen, that's right. What is your first entry? Okay, so uh, I think the people that are going to be listening to this one are going to be of our ilk, people who listen to the emo music, you know, like so- somewhere in the 2000s, in the aughts, you were in high school, you listened to the emo music, you enjoyed yourself, you had a good time, but you don't have any new emo bands. It's okay to listen to new music. Let me give you some. Give me some. Uh, so for this one, I'm actually going to mention the band, the band Hot Mulligan. Ooh. They're, they're, they're very, very good. It's it's right there with that kind of like shouty but still hooky mm-hmm. kind of like actual like catchy songs. Um, the song that I want to put here is Green Squirrel in Pretty Bad Shape. Uh, and it's off of a recent album of theirs. It was one from 2020, I believe. Uh, it's You'll Be Fine is the album. That whole album is fantastic. If you listen to this music in the 2000s and everything, I promise this is for you. <laughs> awesome. I, I'm already going to love this whole section anyways. I'm really going to vibe out to it. <laughs> what, what was it one more time? Uh, the uh, name of the song? Uh, this, the name of the song is Green Squirrel in Pretty Bad Shape. <laughs> <laughs> and Keith, what is your first entry? Okay, so uh, my first entry is... Uh, it's going to be funny. Okay. So I'm going to go with a pretty emo band, which is Story of the Year. Ooh. Nice. Um, and I'm going to go with a song called Just Close Your Eyes. Um, so this song. <laughs> okay. It's a wrestling theme song. A guy comes out to <laughs> in wrestling. <laughs> so. wait, 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 okay. I feel like it's like one of like three wrestlers it's, that are possible. It's, it's Christian. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> It was originally done by um, uh, originally done by uh, Waterproof Blonde, which is uh, a female-led band. Uh, the Story of the Year version is actually a cover that he did when he came back, but they did release it. It's on their on their album, and it's really cool. I really like this song, and uh, just the chorus is a lot of fun. Like I don't know, I just, so um, that's when I was like, I actually came up with this when we when we rolled the the five categories. This song immediately popped in my head. I made a note. <laughs> In in two months, remember the song basically. So, um, so yes, yeah, just close your eyes. My story of the year. Excellent. Okay. So para mi segunda canción, voy a escoger para mis fresitas, para mis emos. Voy a poner panda. Los malentendidos no lloran. Oh, man, this song, of course. I mean, like it, it just when when at the times when it was again like. Ooh, you're emo. Like, or it was like, like when it was said like that, man. And on top of that, you're a Mexican and you like panda. And then, <laughs> and then, and then you were added like a fresita. I was like, Poof, buddy. And this super just like hetero machismo like environment, bro, get the fuck out of here. You literally had to sometimes be like closeted some bands and it's like, but fuck that shit. <laughs> panda fucking ruled. And with this one, like the way it just opens with the like that bass, like do 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 ah, bro, you're already fucking grooving. And then he starts singing the saddest song, "Sé que están en en algún lugar mejor." And then it just like you can just interpret it from like just go off from like what he could say next, and just singing out to this uh just this long lover. And then I like, really like the music video because it's just a lot of just it's a lot of scenarios, a lot of like attempts on people hurting themselves and in the end they all just get botched and it's like they just realize like oh shit like there's just, just like they actually choose to live out their lives and so but the, the, you think it's gonna be really graphic but the, it just ends on a really on a really um, good note so this one really goes out to all my mexican emos pa mis presitas panda <laughs> los, ma- los malaventurados no lloran you're so gonna be you're happy. Gonna, like, you're gonna like, have to send me everything you just said. <laughs> okay. you know, my favorite part, you're just like, 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 <laughs> for my fresitas. <laughs> like, that's my favorite part of everything you said here. <laughs> well, I mean, I gotta, I gotta shut them out. <laughs> what, no, like 100, percent dude. Like, I, do, I I'm, I'm like 100 percent a white person walking around, and I still got this stuff thrown at me. Like, 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 like I, I, I like girls' pants. 
It's <laughs> fine. It's okay, bro. <laughs> okay, and Stephen, what is your song number two? All right, so it's really hard for this one because I do 100% want to just bring like old or uh, new things to this one, but I have to bring in at least one old one here. Yeah. So I think I'm going to go with Anthony Green's I've Been Dying to Reach You. Ooh. Because nice. that song is too good. It's stuck with me since the day I first heard it back in high school. So, yeah. Anthony Green, I've Been yeah. Dying to Reach You. Yeah, no, I think it's a good choice. I, I love that. Okay, again, another one coming from a solo project mm -hmm. uh, into this uh, last episode, into this episode. So that's cool. And Keith, what's your next one? My next one is probably as basic as I get, I think, for this. Um, this band is a band I got into before I realized they were emo. And I think probably, arguably, before they were really full on emo. It's arguable they're still not full on emo. It, yeah, we'll get to it. AFI. Um, I love ah, AFI. Ah. Wait, was was this just December Underground? Because that's an emo album. Uh, I I listened to them back in '95. So, okay, <laughs> that's, like, that's when they were a punk band. Still, yeah, they were still yeah. punk. Yeah, so they weren't really, and then they kind of transitioned right when they hit big. You know, so it was kind of interesting. Um, and I did go with go, go with one of their emo songs, um, and it is one of their hits. But I absolutely love this song. Silver and Cold is so fun. Like, and it's it's one of those it's upbeat emo. It's the kind of stuff that makes you actually kind of want to thrash a little bit, you know? Like, and I dig that about when emo doesn't make you just, you know, stand there and look sad. You know, like <laughs> like having a little energy. And the video is great. Like, Davy Havoc is all over the place. And I just love him, so. Um, earlier I mentioned a song, a band I did, wasn't that I listened to that I didn't mention because I would mention them earlier, kind of. I also listened to Dream Car this week, which is which is his Ooh, nice. side project with the members of No Doubt, which is just absolutely incredible. And they should be on this list, but I cannot justify them being emo. They're eighties <laughs> glam. They're just in the wrong decade, basically. So, um, but yeah, Silver and Cold by AFI is my second song. Excellent. All right, I'm excited. Now I get into my, I guess my my personal favorite uh, edition because it's like my indie pick of of it. I'm going with Maps by the Front Bottoms. And this song is really, I want to say it's really cute, but it's just really also just so sad. Have you ever heard it, uh, uh, Stephen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Honestly, at first, I thought you were going to say the Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's. I was going to oh. say, say Yeah, Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it's not, it's not a cover. It's, it's a really good song. It's called Maps. And it, it literally paints a story. And I, I love it. It's, it's, it's like it's really it's, it's a band really hit a stride during the the emo revival. They were they're, they're during like the mid two thousands, but they're just more of a yeah, you call them a punk band than like, but yeah, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> this song is really cool because like it has that indie feel where you have like that like that chasing acoustic guitar but make it kind of folky with like the store that's being played out, but it is that indie sound to it all that was really there during like the twenty tens, and the store that gets played out is just like. It's, it, it, I mean, it opens up with the whole premise. Like, there's a map uh, in my room, and I got big, big plans, but I can see them slipping through from my sweaty hands. And then it paints into the story on, like, why it's potentially it's, all these plans to this map aren't going to work out between him and her over whatever reason. You say I love you. No, what is it? You say I hate you, and you mean it. You say I love, and I say I love you sounds fake. And then, like, the chorus. I, I, the, the chorus just hits me with, like, the... um. Yeah, the where if, if it would have worked out so it would have if it could have been with anybody, it was anybody else. It would have worked out so well, and it's just like, oh, buddy, it just gets so personal. It's just like, but you just can't help but just like kind of like want to cheer them on because the song, the song itself, the music uh, behind it is just very like you just want to cheer for him. You want to cheer for like for this like to actually work out. So I love the way it sounds. It's very contradicting to like how it makes you feel to what's actually being said. And I, I just, I, I adore the song. It's actually one that that's actually um, introduced me to. So shout, shout out to her for calling out them or introducing me to the front bottoms. And she's not listening. Maps. She's ignoring you. She's ignoring me. She's not listening. <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> uh, Steven, what is your next song? All right. Um, I'm torn on who to say for my third one and who to say for my fourth one. I didn't put these in order or anything. Ooh. But this one, this this would be arguably not an, an emo like frontline emo song i'm going with waiting on a ghost by left at london okay 
yeah, I I was kind of worried that this that um that she might actually be on the jukebox already. Mm-hmm. But there's um so this this song it's a little bit older of a song from her, but there's a live performance from a radio station that I think is for me the definitive version of this song. Okay. Um the whole thing for it it's it's super stripped down, but I think the guitar tone and the actual kind of like vocals um the obviously the lyrics the kind of vocals that are happening in there all lend themselves to being an emo song but i don't think that the version of it that's on the album is as good as that one live radio performance if you decide to go give it a listen please find that one you'll know which one it is okay cool um it's like wait so has it actually been released because we can probably put that one on the jukebox um, yeah, I I don't know if it's there on all like the audio streaming services or anything, but it has a good production value and everything, so I'm sure that it got released as a thing by itself, at least on a couple. For sure, I'll try to find it. And Keith, your next one. Okay, I talked about the origins of emo and my initial interaction with emo, and this is once again a situation probably before the emo term existed in modern culture, like at least widely, and a band that I absolutely love everybody knows i love that many consider to be the forefathers of emo and that's weezer Uh, (laughs) um i love weezer the popular one sure but yeah a lot of people like or like (laughs) some people will say that weezer's emo a lot of weezer fans will be outraged by that i used to get very angry (laughs) when people would say that Weezer was emo because it had a connotation to it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, they're not like all American rejects, you know, like I'm like, it's no, no. <laughs> so I'm like, so I lo- I love Weezer and any chance I have to put a song from them on, I'm going to do so. The problem was I didn't pick a very emo song of them because <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care for those songs all that much. Um, yeah. So I went with, Oh, relatively newer song oh, okay. um, because most people don't really like their new stuff and those people are wrong um, we- Weezer's new stuff is amazing and yes I'm aware of the SNL skit and I sound like Matt Damon yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is still one of the best SNL skits they've ever done by the way uh, so I'm picking a song that's not even on one of their albums it was only released as a single and before I announce that song I'm going to give a quick honorable mention to the song that just missed the cut which is if you're wondering if I want you to, I want you to. Ooh. Um, I love that song, but it's anti-emo. It's upbeat. It's fun. It's about love. I couldn't justify putting that on an emo playlist. <laughs> was, so, is it um, is it Weezer? I, I I'm gonna like, have like so many like grumpy music fans. The one uh, if you want to destroy my sweater. Yeah, the sweater song. Yeah. No, it, okay, that I song like I think is song. an emo song. I don't like that song. That's the problem. Uh, I love that album, but I don't really like that song. I thought you were gonna go with uh, keeping with with the uh, starting with the old one. I was like, the world has turned out left me, bro. I know, and I was thinking like Buddy Holly, but I was like, mm-hmm. but That's no, I'm gonna put on a song that yeah, they only released as a single, and I love the story behind this song. So, the U.S. men's team went to the World Cup in soccer. And they had a theme song that they did not like. They didn't like it. They did not want it to be their theme song. But U.S. soccer decided this is our theme song. And the players were <laughs> like, ugh. Well, we are really big soccer fans. And they said, you know what? We're going to make you our own theme song. And they made them a song called Represent. And it's so fucking good. And it's so much better than the song they chose. And I think it was used in the, like the, the television coverage for the World Cup because they, they realized, oh, this is really good. So, so yeah, represent by Weezer. It is a single only. And you'll know it because the cover is Clint Dempsey celebrating a goal. And the beginning of the song actually has a clip of the audio from the game. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, represent by Weezer. Ah, oh, man. Okay. Last rounds. <sighs> with the bonus round. And I don't know which one to go with. Should I go with what my heart tells me? What the? the fun one tells me but no this is an emo thing i think you should go with what your heart tells you you're right and i already did <laughs> add, I, already, I already did add like the two fun ones with say this soon and los my no so I'm go with what my heart tells me and that is with one of the like also like back in the um, old school emo i like, started old school emo took a hiatus and then came back and then because of the revival literally, literally because of emo revival it was just so perfect for them to for them to come back american football 
is always a great fucking band. And I'm going to go from the first album. And the song I'm going to go with is I'll See You When We're Both Not So Emotional. That title alone <laughs> is just a perfect. And it's literally like you look up the lyrics to this and it's just three, two stanzas and an extra line. And the whole thing is just gets like just, just brushed out through this really good experience. And I just love how you can just like carry these lo- these like lines for just like as far as all these measures. And it's just it's just a beautiful song. And again, I just I love the name of the title. So I'll see you when we're both not so emotional by American Football from the first album. And I'll tell you guys on my honorable mentions what my fun ones was gonna be, who we're gonna be. So, Steven, what is your last one? I had a long list of honorable mentions. Here. Oh yeah, go for it. Um, Prime well, you know, no, do, your, no, no. do your honorable mentions after me because oh, I yes, might right. have your honorable mentions. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, <true>. yeah. <laughs> no, like I, th- those, those are last ones. It's cl- mop and clean up. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, so my last one here is another new one. Um, this has nice. been Movements. The song is Day Lily. Um, that's a really good fucking song. If if you've ever had a bad relationship. Or any of those things, you've been having a hard time in 20 and 2021, and you like the emo, it's right there for you. You can sing along to it. We can all sing along to this band. Um, They're a newer act. I think that they started off real angsty, like 100% full in on it, angsty. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're moving kind of past that because you can only do that on tour for so long you know yeah. you're not necessarily feeling all of those same same emotions when you're playing the songs day in and day out but they, they, they've certainly grown a little bit but this song is damn near perfect oh love it okay movements uh daily excellent mm-hmm. and keith how are you gonna close off the playlist the jukebox this time i'm calling an audible Ooh. So I'm gonna reveal. Wait, my they mentions. sponsored this episode? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish, man. Uh, so <laughs> use use code Jukebox Vertigo. No. Uh, <laughs> so a uh, couple honorable mentions: uh, Red Jumpsuit ar- Apparatus. Mm. Uh, I like face them. Down. Uh, face sounds good. My issue with them is um, I'm kind of conflicted with their principles. Yeah. No. And no. And they're they're real like butt rock now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Exactly. And also like. They have like, they do Christian music, and they claim they've always been Christian. They weren't always Christian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's one of those things where like all the bands back in the day all said that they were Christian bands. Yeah, and then just like four <laughs> or five years later, they were like, "Yeah, I don't know why we were on Tooth and Nail. That was weird." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like no, they had like like one of their songs had a really offensive name in their first album, and I'm like, no. And then they changed <laughs> the name of the song, but they pretended it never happened. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah, but I always like that song. I, I, I you know, they're fine. Uh, but I think <laughs> nothing, nothing will ever take away the first time I, I, um, drop to my guitar to the actual tuning yeah. to, your, to your guardian angel and then it sounds perfect nothing no, no nothing will ever take that away from me that was awesome <laughs> dude i had the exact same experience like you 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 tune into like drop d you just tune it's into so a D low. and it just and you just feel like i'm playing the song mom <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um my other honorable mention is my favorite emo um uh, lead singer, which is Dashboard Confessional. Oh, you nice. son of a bitch! <laughs> that, <it's, laughs> um, I love Caravas. He's he's the man. He has three bands, and they're all great. He's just an amazing dude, and he he doesn't live an emo lifestyle. Like he doesn't seem like he's really depressed in real life. You know, he's like a really happy guy. He loves music. Like I just love him to death. And I think he has a really great voice. And also incredibly handsome. Insanely oh, yeah. handsome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, specifically, I'm always giving a shout out to Twin Forks. His, you know, folky <laughs> country singing kind of thing. Side project. I love them. I saw them live. They're incredible. See them live. They come to your town. Um, but my pick is going to be Paramore. Oh, damn. For real. That's because, a good one. Because I love Paramore. I still have, I have some, again, my definition of emo is different than everybody else's. So No, it's okay. But, no, I, think pop, I think pop punk fits, in, fits into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm going to go with it. Uh, Paramore, I'm going to pick uh, Still Into You. Uh, okay. Which I fucking love that song. Um, it's actually uh, our good friend Reina, Steven, 
Um, me and her are both huge Paramore fans. And I was like, you know, if we ever get married, this is going to be the song we dance to. Right? She was like, you really dance to this song. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but this is this is our song. And then I found the the um, the uh, what's it called? The oh my gosh, the guy that does the the covers, jazz band covers. Oh, I, I don't know jukebox. the name. Of- Postmodern jukebox. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do a cover of "Still Into You" and it's slowed down and jazzy. And I'm like, okay, this version, this is what we're <laughs> going to dance to. So. Um, but yeah, "Still Into You" by Paramore will be my final song. But uh, um, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I'm trying to think if I have any other emo honorable mentions. I mean, no one picked "My Chemical Romance" because we all I, thought everybody yeah, else was going to pick "My yeah, Chemical Romance." Yeah, that's exactly it's, it's, what happened. I it's wasn't right going. There. To, I wasn't going to because I mean Keith always does. So I was, but I didn't last time, did I? I mean, you always pick honey. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. yeah. You already, uh, did you already add honey already to this one? Not this and, time. Uh, but yeah, I know. So sorry to the listeners. I know My Chemical Romance was being probably screamed to be added. It would have. Probably we each have our own pick, but I really counted on these two guys to do it for me. <laughs> well, no, we also I, counted I, on there being more than three people here. And yeah. The odds yeah. of it being brought up was so high, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> no, so. I think... Like honestly, the the groups that I kind of expected to end up on there were the used, um, possibly Silverstein, Ooh, nice. um, like groups like this. Th- there's considerably less screamo on this list because I think you guys have already listened to these bands. You need new bands. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah. Well, this is my limited experience with emo too. So, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, that comes into part of it. So, um, wait. So, do you have any honorable mentions, or was that it? I have so many for heat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't think of any others really besides uh, Mike Him. And here's another disputed one for you: the Bravery. No, that's okay. good. Yeah, I I love the Bravery. I think they're really cool. I, yeah. I there was um there was the point when we were talking about the use earlier. I was going to bring this up where when I became aware of what emo was and like how it, it was impacting modern music is I caught on to the used My Chemical Romance and The Bravery within three days of each other. Mm. And th- that's like the first wave of emo that really struck me. So um, really liked them. I always let, leaned towards The Bravery of the three early on. Obviously, My Chem is the one that I love. Um, saw them live. They're absolutely incredible. Um, oh, it was so good. It was their, I think it was their last tour, like before the reunion tour. Mm-hmm. And um, they played every song I wanted them to play. Except for the one song I wanted them to play, which is my favorite song, Houseway brought up, Honey, This Mirror Isn't Big Enough for the Both of Us, which mm. is my favorite Mike Kim song. <laughs> That's a good cool uh, song. Yeah. And so, but they played everything else and it was just fun. It was in Vegas. It was at the House of Blues, I want to say. Oof. And so it was a really, really cool show and they were just amazing and really good dudes. Like they were cool on, um, on stage and yeah, just great. So uh, other than that, I can't think of any others. <laughs> um but I will say I'm kind of disappointed in myself not being able to come up with more female-led emo bands. So oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, we, we you you brought up uh, Paramore in there. I think yeah. if if you're going with Paramore, and for some reason people didn't listen to the last episode that I was on, if you like Paramore, just go listen to Stand Atlantic. <laughs> oh my God, I haven't had a chance to tell you. Thank you so much for introducing me to Stand Atlantic. <laughs> I don't know if you I, I don't know if you heard our next episode after that. No, but I, we were talking about what we've been listening to, and I said, well. Uh, basically, like I compared it to Zelda's Triforce, I was like, <laughs> so I was like, so I had two pieces of Triforce, which is uh, Beach Bunny and Best Coast, like <laughs> as far as female led bands. And I'm like, and I was looking for that third piece of the Triforce, and Steven introduced me to Stand Atlantic, and I was like, yes, this band is incredible. <laughs> I I was obsessed with them for weeks, just listening to them nonstop, <laughs> and they still come up quite often. So thank you. I haven't had a chance to tell you that's such a great band. Yeah, I'm so glad. Thank you. And Steven. Your honorable mentions. All right, so the honorable mentions are are long here. Uh, first and foremost, uh, in keeping with the theme of if you need new music and everything, not everyone listened to the My Chem B sides release of uh, Conventional oh. Weapons, mm-hmm. which I think might actually have my favorite My Chem song in Boy Division. Really nice. Yeah, the the, the first song on that album, well, of uh, not album, like that release uh, EP. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that damn song. Um, other than that, um, my favorite post-hardcore band that I mentioned earlier was Lower Definition. They're one of the most inf- influential groups for me. Um, Seosin even put out new music <laughs> more recently. Um, I didn't love that album, but the first song on it, I think, is a damn near perfect song. And that yeah. song is Silver String. Um, Say Anything, A Walk Through Hell. 
bro. Say that's, anything is great. Yeah, like I don't love everything. Say anything, but that song, that's a good damn song. Um, the band issues, the the band issues, they're made up of a bunch of different bands nice. that that were all these different emo plus hardcore bands, and they put out an album called Beautiful Oblivion, that's funky jazzy incredibly fucking poppy um nice. there, there's a country song on that album like that that album is good um <laughs> and then the other the other group that i that i think sh- always sits right alongside bayside for me is the matches for the album Yvonne doll killed the locals mm-hmm. so yeah th- those are those are the main ones for honorable mentions th- there's more here um <laughs> but I don't want to do that to everybody. The The last one I'll say is just listen to the slowed down, the 33 RPM version of Jolene by Dolly Parton, where it takes okay. that song that's already pretty sad. And when they slow it down to 33 RPM, it sounds like there's like, um, because the time period of the recording of the song, it sounds like there's a man who who has his, his, like his actual lover, his significant other who's being taken by some woman in a time that would have been incredibly complicated to be a homosexual man. Mm. It's wonderful. <laughs> nice. And it's just slowing the song down to 33 RPM. Awesome. Yeah. Um, my, I, I, I want to okay. really quick jump on. I forgot. Yeah. Motion city soundtrack. I love motion. City. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just had to throw that out there. <laughs> Uh, so basically, my honorable mentions were the ones that didn't get to make like the the top two songs um, because they're they're pretty much like I would just picked all the songs from like my, my high school and I did, I didn't want to just put uh, pop punk uh, emo, but uh, Fall Out Boy, Carpet Tunnel mm-hmm. Love, I was like that's like one of my favorite songs. Taking Back Sunday, Q without the E, yup. These are just songs I just had fun listening to with like for my serious picks, and the one that didn't make the cut because it was like going to be my fun pick is a is from a band. I was never fond of. I never liked them because it was they were like again from like the high school times. So like not every emo band was gonna be good. Not every screamo band was that good. And I was with some buddies, and my friend was just like, "Hey, I gotta check on this house because he was gonna be a chamberlain for a friend's quinceanera." And I'm sitting there, and it's like, okay, they're gonna have to just like do a quick, I guess like a, a quick update to one of the steps to the to the main dance. And they play the song, and I'm cringing inside, but I'm like. Yeah, the shit kind of bobs, but I'll, ne- I'll never tell anybody. <laughs> um, a letter from Janelle from Chiodos. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Okay, so I saw Chiodos and, S- and Silverstein in this on the same concert, nice. like, on, like on the same tour together. Silverstein is perfect and flawless live. Chiodos is a goddamn mess, <laughs> but it was wonderful. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 it's pretty much probably because like. Wow, she's really going with this song for her dance for her, for her quinceañera. <laughs> this song, like, I, I get it aesthetically, I get it, but then we're listening to the lyrics and it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so I was like, just like, just like the ballsiness of the, it's like picking that song. I was like, you know, I, that's that's fucking punk rock and just like, but it's emo, but it's really good. So I've, I've always just had this fondness just to this one Chioto song, a letter from Janelle, but it didn't make the cut. All right. Uh, honorable mentions. Moving on, closing that page. A lot of fun. Like, God damn it, I fucking love talking about emo music. Mm-hmm. So, moving on to the next segment: new releases. It is that time, Keith. What do you see on your end? Uh, coming out tonight is the full album for Lil Nas X. Oh, finally! Yeah. I think it's actually out. Uh, critics gave it a sixty percent. They're wrong. Like they're they cannot be right <laughs> just based on what we know already, so that's really low. Um, but the, it, I read the reviews and they're kind of like disingenuous. I think personally, uh, we have a new Thrice album. Someone's a big Thrice album fan or Thrice fan. I can't remember if it was you or Crozen. Uh, probably Crozen. Yeah, uh, we have an Enrique Iglesias album. If anyone's uh, so inclined, I am. <laughs> um, uh, I saw another really good one. What was it? Uh, uh, there's going to be a Lindsey Buckingham album, which is the guy from Fleetwood Mac. Uh, he has a solo album coming out. Ah. Um, what was there? Was one hey, other big one? Of, you know, there's a Hawthorne Heights album. Oh man, a brand new one. The The Rain Just Follows Me is the name of the album. Yes. Huh. Yeah. Oh, uh. and then <laughs> uh, also there's an album uh, from The Beths 
which is a really cool band. They're doing a they have a live album from Auckland, New Zealand, so that's I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I think that's it all I got for this next week, and then the week after that, since we do record every two weeks, um, there was the new Saint Vincent album actually comes out this weekend. I'm, Ooh, so, okay. torn on, I'm so torn on Saint Vincent, like the last like two <laughs> albums. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna listen to it. It's probably it's probably gonna be one of my big listens for the next time. So. Um, and then Japanese Breakfast. Right, Josue? Were you a fan of Japanese Breakfast? Oh, fuck yeah. Wait, what do they got? Yeah, they have an album called S- Sable. Another album? Yeah. In the same year? Amazing. There's fuck new, yeah. There's a new Poppy album coming out, and me and Daniel will both listen to that, I'm sure. Um, g Easy has an album coming out, if that's your thing. Alicia Cara has an album coming out, which is really interesting, because... She had a little bit of pop success, and she wasn't great, but I think she's actually switching up her sound a bit, and I'm kind of curious to see what she's going to do. It might be a little bit different. Uh, and then we get a new Third Eye Blind album. There's a name I haven't heard in a while. Um, Cold War Kids. Uh, also Angels. a name I haven't heard in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Angels and Airwaves. Oof. Ooh, nice. Wait, Angels and Airwaves, what? Single? Album? What do we got? It's like an album called Life Forms. Oh, fuck yeah, finally. I was actually a big fan of Dreamwalker from 2015. Yeah. It was a great uh, album. X Ambassadors, really? Huh, that's interesting. A Neo EP. I guess that's been probably out. Yeah. I um, think that's pretty much it that I can see here. Okay. Uh, been- we, we still have the Puff Daddy album like lingering. and It's been like pending for weeks. <laughs> and it's, it's here. It says it's coming out then, but we'll see. Oh, Natalie Imbruglia. So I'll probably listen to that. Damn, we have an emo episode, and it seems like all these cats just came out of the woodwork. I'm seeing <laughs> projects. I'm seeing projects from Four Years Strong. I'm seeing Attack Attack, and one I never thought I'd ever see again. Or not the Pretty Reckless, but the Pretty Reckless now. But an actual album from an album from We Were Promised Jetpacks. I have not said that <laughs> bad name. I have not said that bad name in so long. <laughs> This is this new At the Drive in album coming out this week? Like, <laughs> <laughs> we should have more emo episodes, guys. They'll probably they'll all come back. <laughs> now we're good. <laughs> uh, no, the stuff I was actually really excited for. And one actually, Keith, one I really want you to check them out. Dead Sarah, an album. And check out their check out their first album, like their self-titled one. And then see if you like and then probably come back to the new to the new one. Ain't it tragic, but I I think you'll really, really like these guys. Dead Sarah is well, it's such a great fucking band. I, okay. I've considered them before uh, on the playlist. They came out as honorable mentions. But that's one that just, that one just like the one that surprised me. Alien Weaponry. There are two Alien Weaponries out there. If it's the Australian one, I'm excited for this album. <laughs> uh, and then... Um, there was that also Lord EP that was kind of like the different language of some of her songs. Oh, shit. I'm about to listen to that. Yeah. yeah they're, they're like in a different language. Um, ooh, a new Maria single. Oh, it's just a she's, remix of Summer Song. She's a Kiwi, so it might be a Maori or something. Maori. Ooh, cool. So. Uh, a, a Kuko single, Under the Sun. Definitely going to listen to that. Um, oh, yeah. Since I, we're still on the topic of talking. Well, this whole episode is the topic of emo. Um, Daniel had honorable mentions, and I should call him out. His hmm. my, his my Chem uh, song would have been a Cemetery Drive, so there would have been a My Chem song on here. Yeah. Uh, he also would have picked My Curse from Kill Switch Engage. And then uh, the probably the most emo one was Tears Don't Fall by by Bullet from My Valentine. Damn. <laughs> yeah, Shout out yeah. to David Benitez. <laughs> yeah. Daniel Barroso? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Yeah. David, David Benitez. Oh, David Benitez. Oh, wait. The, like, that dude loved that damn band. Oh, okay. Oh, that's Stacey. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll go ahead and give Crozen's honorable mentions, even though he didn't say anything to me. Uh, so that's going to be Coed and Cambria and two side projects from people from Coed and Cambria. <laughs> the prize fighter inferno <laughs> yeah. last time literally he had like this intricate like how these all are related to each other I think it was really funny <laughs> it was awesome <laughs> alright so yeah those are the ones I'm pretty much excited for uh, DM like, honestly Dead Sarah I'm, I'm really fucking excited for that one okay next up uh, Keith what is the next episode gonna be our next episode is going to be great music videos only songs with amazing videos that accompany them. And we're going to be joined by at least one special guest. I hope two. Uh, the first one is going to be uh, returning 
triumphantly returning, uh, Jessica, also from Geek Elite Media. Yes. Uh, she she dib- dibs this one right away. I gave her first first crack because uh, she got last crack of the last list. So I was like, I'll give her first crack. So she took this one. And hopefully, fingers crossed, because fans or plans change with this person by the minute. <laughs> Ho- but hopefully, our producer Liz will make her show <gasps> debut Ooh! with the music video episode. I'm so fucking Wait. excited. Can can I get it in before like the best mention in here? I was gonna say I thought you actually kind of built for the uh, uh, for this one too, like a long time ago. I, I might yeah. have, but I because I didn't want him to have two of them, you know, like you know. So we, yeah, but anyways, I understand. Uh, but yeah, if you want to throw something out, go ahead. Give I just a preview. Clint Eastwood via the Gorillas. I'm I'm almost certain Gorillas will be on the list. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but I'm excited. I'm excited for that one. And the good news is. Uh, this is the last category that we currently have drawn, so we're going to be drawing a brand new set of five categories. Nice. And we Ooh. will see what is the future holds. So this is a phase two. <laughs> <laughs> Next batch. Alrighty then. Uh, shit. Lost my place. Yes, that is, that is right. This that, After all that, this does conclude this episode of Jukebox Vertigo. I want to thank the co-host or their amazing emo picks. Steven, insert your plugs, shout outs. I'm not on the internet right now. It's 2021. I'm rebuilding myself and everything. So go, go check out uh, my fantastic, wonderful, amazingly talented friend, Sid. Uh, it's at 10 speed, T E N S P D, yes. everywhere on the internet. She's actually got a new album that's in the final stages of being put together right now. Ooh. So I've heard it. It's good. Awesome. Um, I'm stoked. Excellent. Awesome. Sid used to come into Hastings a lot. Oh, yeah. When I worked there. And we talked all the time. So that's really cool. Yeah, Sid's a fantastic like, human being. Yeah. I remember seeing her jamming out, making music to Game Boys. Mm-hmm. So, so fucking long ago. That, that's still in there. The chip tune is in there. Yes, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> and Keith, plugs, shout outs. Your turn. All right, so you can find this show and every other show we do at Geek Elite Media on Twitter as well as at geekelitemedia.com. Uh, our other show is We Have Issues. We review every new comic that comes out this every week, seemingly every new. We might miss a few. Uh, you can find that at WHI Podcast. You can find me at WHI Podcast Keith and our aforementioned producer Liz at WHI Podcast Liz. Excellent, and thank you. To the listeners, for your continued support on this musical sharing ride. As I said before, you can check out this show also on Twitter at Jukebox Vertigo. Myself on Twitter, I'm at Josue Reads Josue. And I'm also starting to stream more now. So twitch.tv slash Josue plays Josue. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, also jump the gun there. So jump, going back to the Jukebox Vertigo uh, Twitter account, uh, you can also check out there where uh, public plays will be. Uh, updated and shared weekly as well as, as well as with a short playlist to go with every new episode with our picks so let Liz now let loose with their jams and geek out this concludes our broadcast Peace.